Now, we are being joined by Michael Famaruti uh, to explain losses over the 14 days and what the next 14 days hold, talking about the lockdown uh, announced by the president. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to be here this morning. Thank you. All right. You are a data man. And at this period, they say data gathering is more crucial than ever. Do you agree? Well, yeah. Um, I think particularly with this kind of disease where people can have the disease and not show symptoms, it's important that we have a fair idea of how far the virus has actually spread. Um, and I think that's something that we're still trying to grapple with in this country. What kinds of data have you collated and what areas have you largely focused on at this time? Well, at this time, I think the beyond what I mentioned about, you know, knowing the true number of cases, the next important thing is really is trying to understand which people and industries are going to be affected most by the crisis and the lockdown. Um, what we've tried to do primarily right now is focus on two things. One is what industries are particularly vulnerable to to the lockdown, right? So, for example, we've noticed that across the world, services industries like restaurants and tourism and trade have been more affected by the lockdown. Now, that's important to know because when you come to Nigeria, you notice that about about 75 percent of small businesses are in the services sector. So we know already that a lot of them are going to be impacted by the continuation of the lockdown. Um, so that's the kind of data we've tried to focus on to see if we can better understand um, where the government can focus its relief efforts. All right. What patterns have emerged during your analysis? Well, so like I said, um, one thing that's come up is that services sectors are more impacted. Um, the other th pattern that has emerged, which, you know, is understandable, but we're glad that data has guided us there, is that um, the impact of the lockdown in particular depends on how a country's institutions and infrastructure can support a digital economy. Um, so, for example, in Nigeria, only about 5% of people have used the internet to pay any bill in the last one year, according to data from the World Bank. Now, what this means is that, you know, if this lockdown continues for a prolonged period, we're likely to see a disruption in important services, right? Because people are, are used to making face-to-face -face transactions to keep their livelihoods and economies going. Um, so those are the type of trends that are worrying. Um, and again, I do think that we've so far not really answered the question of how to adapt the lockdown to our local environment, given um, how physical our own economy is compared to the West. Um, as concerns Nigeria, uh, are we showing enough respect for the analysis of data at this time, considering its relevance and going forward, do you see maybe a little more effort being expended in making sure that we have what we need to plan? Well, I would very much like to think so. Think so. Um, there's a saying that we should never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, Nigeria has in the past tended to do that. But I think uh, particularly when you look at the focus on providing relief materials to vulnerable households and you look at the fact that the CBN has enacted a number of lending windows, those two are probably the biggest policy responses so far and they are dependent or their success is dependent on how well the policy maker can target the scheme. And to do that, you need to know where people are and how well they're doing. Um, and that's data that we've not really had. Um, and I hope that this process encourages us to pay more attention to that type of data over time. All right. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Pleasure as always. Thank you.